everybody, it's Amy, also known as Aussie Stitcher in Texas, here on YouTube and over on Instagram, here today with my September update. It is September 30th and I'm happy to share with you everything that I've been working on for this past month. So I have whips, I have a finish, I have a partial FFO, if there is such a thing. Uh, it is mostly finished. I did most of it today, but there's just a little bit more that I want to do. So I'll get out to the store tomorrow to pick up some more stuff that I need. Um, so let's get right into it. I hope everyone's been having a great September. The weather has finally broken here in Texas. You know, we're no longer in the high 90s every day of the week. Um, we've had some lows in the high 50s and low 60s, which has been a real blessing. I've been able to get the windows open and get some fresh air into my place. So I'm really, really loving that. The cooler mornings and then the evenings starting to cool down as well, which is really great. So let's get into it. I'll start with my partial FFO. Um, so this is um, Winter by Cricut Collection. Let me move this out of my way. So I finished this um, towards the beginning of the year and I have finished it as a flat fold. So I did looked at um, Vonnegut and Stitch and um, the Fat Quarter Shop and kind of used a combination of the two of their um, tutorials. So just, I've got the light blue fabric and then I picked a darker, a darker blue that I just picked up at Joanne's. Um, cut everything up, did my absolute best. I have never done anything like this before, so it might not be great and the most professional work, but it is something that I am very proud of myself for doing. So what I'm probably gonna do still is add some kind of cording or something around here just to kind of finish it up and close it out. Um, but yeah, that is all done and all finished. I now know how to do a flap fold. A few mistakes were made, <laughs> but um, thankfully I got them kind of fixed before the glue really set. So I was able to kind of just reposition things and move them along. So that is all done. Sorry, something's on my nose. Um, next up is my finish. I really powered through to finish this one because I wanted to get it done before Halloween so I could get it up and finished and displayed in my place for Halloween. And that is Midnight Way by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Here it is here. Uh, last time you saw it, I'll put a picture up on the screen, but I was about halfway. I, was, I had done The Witch, but hadn't uh, done all the way to the end, but powered through, like I said. This is on a um, Under the Sea Fabrics Luna. It was one of the fabrics of the month in a 32 count Jobelin. So all done. I'll do this one in a flat fold as well, I think. That's probably gonna be the only way I finish things really. I'm not that adventurous. Once I know how to do one thing, I will do it until I am blue in the face. A uh, good thing with this pattern is it's quite small, so I still have a whole lot of fabric available to do something else on. Uh, this was a great um, fun stitch, lots of, lots of blocks, and then in certain places there were a lot of color changes as well, but nice and easy, all using the called for DMC, uh, and then also some D DMC at all, which I don't know if you can really see. Um, it's all up in here and in various other places. But so cute. Um, I was on the fence for a long time about um, frost frosted pumpkin pieces. Not that I didn't like them, I just wasn't being drawn to them. And I started to see them more and more on from various um, YouTubers and just really started to like them. And absolutely love this. I have two more that I have in my stash. That is Winter Carriage Ride and what's the other one? If it's the Nutcracker Parade or one of the Christmas ones. Um, I'm also thinking of getting, I think Maple Town it's called, and then they've just come out, or they're launching I think next month, their Halloween wreath. Um, but that I haven't pre-bought. I'm going to wait and have a couple of the releases so I can see what it's going to look like to, before if I decide. I don't like to get into too many stitch alongs just because 
if I kind of invest and then halfway through don't like it, then it's just a UFO, you know, I'm not going to force myself to finish it. But if I'm, you know, if it's halfway in and I like it, then I'll go in and buy it. So we shall see. Now we're going to get into my whips and I worked on another four pieces this month. I was very busy. I had a lot of stitching time. So first off, let's look at my Mirabilia. So this is um, Garden Prelude. Um, here is what she will look like when she's finished. I have made um, a change to the fabric. So I haven't gone with the natural brown linen that is called for. I am using uh, fabrics by Stephanie Loki in a 32 count even weave. I think this is a Lugana from memory. Um, but here, uh, I'll put up where it was last time you saw it, if you'd seen it. And here is what I have done. This dress, y'all, is, there is so much dress. <laughs> so last time I was kind of over here and I have filled in all of this so far and her dress still continues and then comes out more to this side. So I still have a whole lot of fabric over here that has the rest of the dress and then basically a repeat of the flowers and whatnot and obviously the the trellis um sorry the columns and things like that so i'm almost halfway there i would say i have got um i've almost completely i the pattern is huge so i do a photocopy so i don't have to worry about ruining the original um pattern so i've just photocopied it and it's on two giant um what we in Australia call A3 size. I'm not exactly what it's called out here, um, but it's on an A3 and I've almost finished one page. I've just got a little bit kind of right in the middle that I didn't finish, but um, one page apart from backstitching will be done. So the backstitching, there's not a lot, thank goodness, um, apart from some of the columns, which is easy because it's just lines. There's just obviously a little bit around her face and arms and then on the the violin for the bow to um, to kind of give it the the string of the bow. I have done. It's all in the called for DMC um, Karen Water Lilies and then some Chronic, which is the bow. I believe just the bow. Um, but I have done her skin one over one. I don't think I'll ever be doing that again. <laughs> Maybe it'll look different and look a little bit more poppy once I've got the back stitch in, but. While I like it, I just don't like it enough to put myself through doing that ever again. One over one on 32 count is just a beast. And I didn't pay enough attention when I was looking at the pattern to know that there are blends. So I've had to do, I did the, the bottom leg with like the darker color and the top leg with the lighter color. So I think it has kind of worked. Um, I know Jessie Marie from Jessie Marie Does Stuff has a really good method for blends when you're doing one over one, but um, I don't know if I have the patience to ever do that again. I tried it out on this one because she doesn't have a whole lot of skin. So I was like, that's a good one to, to start with. The other Mirabilia I have in my stash is Persephone and she has a lot of skin. So there was no way in hell, to be honest, that I was going to be trying one over one skin uh, on that. But this... It wasn't too much, so I just grinned and bared it um, and did it. She's done. Let's see what she looks like once I get the um, the back stitch in. Maybe it will really pop and convert me to one over one skin. But like I said, if it's not enough of a pop, there is no way I'm doing one over one skin again. I still think I've got, um, I did Andromeda earlier this year from Mirabilia. I did her skin um, two over two, and I still think it looks great. Um, so yeah. Those of you who can do one over, one over one skin, I truly admire you for your patience, but I just don't have it. <laughs> the next piece I worked on um, is the Autumn Lane Stitchery Dark Queen of the Earth. So the first part of that came out on September 1st and I have completed that. So here it is. I think we're kind of like, I feel like this is like her hips, kind of at her waist and her hips up here. Um, so that is done 
I am using the cold for everything. There is DMC and then Petite Treasure Braid Silk Malay. Well, it's not Petite Treasure Braid, I think, but it's Silk Lame uh, from the same people who do Petite Treasure Braid. And then just DMC. And I am also using the cold for fabric. Well, one of the cold for fabric options. Um, it is a 32 count um, nightshade by Under the Sea Fabrics in linen. I've said this before, I'm not a massive fan of linen. It's I find the weave a little bit loose. Um, I can't iron it, like it just doesn't. I spent so long ironing this and there are still so many wrinkles. So many wrinkles. And I'm, because it's a hand dyed fabric, I'm hesitant <laughs> to try anything um, on it other than just a, you know, a, a kind of an iron at a specific temperature. Um, but if anybody has used anything additional please let me know in the comments. I'd love to um, be able to get, like I said, get the wrinkles out of this thing because I'm gonna to wanna to frame it when she's done. And I already have one piece that was on linen that the wrinkles did not come out of and I framed and there's a wrinkle in it and it drives me insane. But, but what's done is done. There's nothing I can do about it now, but I will take any advice there is. You know, if I can use, I've got like the downy wrinkle guard that I use on my clothes, but I don't want to use on this, but if anyone has used it, please let me know. As long as it doesn't ruin my um, fabric, I will give it a go. So that's another piece. The next one I worked on, which was actually a new start as well, um, was Visit Lothlorien from Country Magic Stitch. So this is a full, uh, full coverage piece um, that I purchased off her website. I have done so far 2100 stitches on this thing and this is also my whip go go my whip go call for october so it will be coming back out this i actually really really enjoyed it is it's full coverage it's a decent size but it's only like 15 colors and i'm doing a heaven and earth designs full coverage and the amount, and I know that's coming from artwork, whereas this is coming from more of a graphic designed piece. So it's, the design processes are just different. But I find with the Heaven and Earth designs, while I love it, I feel like in certain places, there's just a random color that, because paint just goes differently when you're painting over things, it's given a random color and whatever software Heaven and Earth designs use picks up that color, so then gives you a stitch in that color. Um, completely different to the stitches that are around. So sometimes that just drives me insane with the full coverage that I have. Um, so I've either been just stitching the same color that's around it, or I will actually put a thread in and then see that one color in a sea of green, something that's a little bit yellow, and I just think it looks weird. So I'm really enjoying this one. It goes really fast, obviously, because it's so few colors, um, but I, I think it's gonna look great. I'm really, I'm really actually enjoying it. I don't know if you can tell, but there's like two colors of green in here, which at first was kind of driving me insane, but I do think you can kind of get the effect of it. Um, whereas if this was a heaven and earth design, I imagine that would be about 15 colors alone in that one area of green, which there's nothing wrong with, but just sometimes I don't want to do that. Sometimes I like a little bit of block colors. Um, I'll also put up a picture of what that will look like when it's finished. I don't have a what it looked like last time, obviously, because it was a new start. And then finally for the month, I worked on my Villain Crest from Atomic Tiki Pins. Um, it, this is the Ursula Crest. And I am about 80%, I think. This is Pattern Keeper compatible. So, so was um, my last one as well, I think. I love things being in Pattern Keeper. So I'm about 80% done with the stitching. One thing Pattern Keeper doesn't pick up is backstitch. So I've got the, just the paper pattern that I printed out um, to do the backstitch. And I started doing some of the backstitch over on this side, which you can kind of see, there is going to be so much backstitch in this. Um, but I think it really, at first I was like, I don't really see this making a difference. But as I was stitching, you know, I didn't have uh, this uh, other flotsam or jutsam uh, was hidden, so I couldn't see. But now that I've got it out and can kind of see them next to each other, 
one with the backstitch, one with not, I can see, yes, okay, it is actually doing something and making things pop a little bit more. So that is coming along nicely. That's just on a 32 count black Jobelin um, that I picked up from one, one two, three stitch. Uh, it's a massive piece of fabric um, that is folded up multiple times just to make it easy for me to show here. Uh, and once I am, I don't know if when I'm done with this, I'll cut so then I have more manageable sizes because I do have four of the villain crests in total that I want to do. And working off this giant piece of fabric, trying to get it into my Q-snap, and then just having all this excess drives me insane. So I think I'm just going to cut pieces into, you know, the sizes I need, giving myself a generous margin because it is a massive piece of fabric. I can, I've got space to do that, to give myself a good margin if I do accidentally cut it a little bit um, wrong. But those, that is what I have worked on this month. I... I've been really enjoying my stitching, work has been busy, I started a new role with my company which I'm really excited about and um, like I said very busy. New things for me to learn but I, I love learning new things so it's what keeps me interested. Um, I only have one piece of haul um, for this month. I've been very good with my purchasing but I did join a new Fabric of the Month Club. Um, so I am in the Under the Sea Fabrics um, which I believe we're about a week behind. I think Leslie said she's going to start sending out the, the September fabric of the month next week or the week after. So that'll get here when it gets here. I'm okay with that. Um, but I also joined the Be Stitch Me um, fabric of the month. And I am trying 40 count. So, so far I've only ever worked on a little bit of Ada, but on my higher accounts, even weaves and linens, I work primarily on 32 count, a little bit of 28 count. I have got in my stash one piece of 36 count linen, but like I said, I'm not a huge fan of linen. And I discovered you can get 40 count even weave, which is Vridal. Um, I think that's how you say it. So I joined the Bestitch Me Fabric of the Month. I have joined, I think the one where she, because she has like a bright and a neutrals, or you can join where it's just like, you'll get one or the other, she'll pick. So I joined the, the one or the other option. This month I got a some a color from the neutral. Sorry, my, I'm very tongue-tied today. <laughs> um, and it is called Sand Dollar. So it is kind of like an off-white and you can see some slight modeling. Um, this is, like I said, 40 count and it is so small. <laughs> There's gonna need to be a lot of light when I do work on this, but a beautiful neutral that absolutely anything could go on. So very happy with that and to be in that club. I guess I do want to start trying to work on some of the higher counts um, where possible because then it just makes your pieces a little bit smaller. You know, some of these pieces can be gigantic. Um, whereas if you, the higher count you have, obviously the smaller overall piece you get. And I like that because I don't want to have too many gigantic pieces lying around that I may or may not finish that might just end up in a scrapbook um, container. But that is me, short and sweet this month. Um, thank you everybody for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you could like this video and subscribe. Um, and I'm always happy to hear your comments. Um, everyone who says hi and comments on the video, I do really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Thank you to those who have come back. Um, and I hope you all have a great day and a wonderful October. Thanks. Bye.